and neighbors welcome back to the brownstone my name is rich brown i hope you're doing very well thank you for joining me here today and in today's lesson we're going to talk about the ultimate baseline builder i get a lot of questions about building baselines and how to apply some of these ideas that we've been talking about so today i'm going to show you a little bit about um, rhythm and putting together the right notes and coming up with very cool baselines and it's all based on a very simple idea now um, the first lessons that I ever posted on this channel were all about rhythm and getting a deeper understanding of the 16th note subdivision. That's going to be essential to our lesson today. So if you haven't seen those videos, I'll link the first one up here and then you can follow through with the rest. I think there are four videos. Watch them all, like them all, sh share them all, whatever. Um, but today... We're going to talk about the 16th note subdivision. And basically what I'm going to do is divide the bar in half. Now here's the deal in the 16th note subdivision. I'm thinking of what I'm calling upbeats and downbeats, or let's say downbeats and upbeats where the one, uh, the quarter notes, one, two, three, four, and the ands associated with those quarter notes, are going to be what I call the downbeats. And then all the notes in between those, which, which, be, which would be the E's and the A's, are gonna be the upbeats. What do I mean by that? Well, I'll show you. So if I have a 16th note subdivision, in other words, I'm counting one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, in a bar, then yes, the one and are the downbeats and the E A are the upbeats. So I'll demonstrate this by showing you or counting through a, a simple 16th note subdivision. And if you follow the bouncing ball, you'll see what I mean. So if my 16th note subdivision is one E and a two E and a, you can see what's happening. The one, one and two and three, and those are happening on the downbeats. And then the one E, a, uh, E, a, uh, E, a, uh, those are happening on the upbeats. So all I did in that bass line that I started with in the intro was play down, 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 up, 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 down, 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 up, 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 up. So there are four notes that are happening on the downbeats and there are four notes that are happening on the upbeats. And then all I did was fill in those notes with chord tones and scale tones. Very simple. So you can do this with any scale, with any combination of notes. And it's so great to just play through and make up bass lines using this method. The other thing you can do is use the downbeats and upbeats in different combinations. But for today, just to start you off on a, a kind of a, a, a beginner's sort of course on this, I'm just going to um, keep it simple and play the four downbeats in the first half of the bar and then play the four upbeats in the second half of the bar. Anna One is off on vacation. I think she's in Ibiza or something. Um, but for today, I've got the, the aid of this cool little pedal called the Beat Buddy. Stay tuned. I'll have a whole separate video demonstrating the wonders of the Beat Buddy very soon. But for now, let's get back to this lesson. So I'm going to turn on the beat buddy and I'm going to count the 16th note subdivision. And then I'm going to play the four downbeats and then the four upbeats. And then I'll show you how I put this bass line together. Here we go. So the beat buddy, I've slowed it down. I've slowed down the beat buddy to 80 BPM, uh, just to demonstrate the 16th note subdivision and how this line is put together. Check it out. 
So there's my groove. And then if I count the 16th note subdivision, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So now if I isolate the quarter notes and the ands on the first half, one and two and, I have four notes, one and two and. Pretty simple, right? But then for the second half of the bar, I'm playing all the upbeats. So there, I've got one, two, three, E, and a, four, E, and a, one, two, three, E, and a, four, E, and a. So that if I take away the quarter notes, the three and the four, and the ands of three and four, then I get this pattern. Goes one, two, three, four. One, two, bop, 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 one, two, bop, 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 one, two, bop, 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 bop. Now that I've isolated those notes, you know what we do. We take it to the bass. Three, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two. One, two. One, two. Now this is gonna be tricky for a few people, so I suggest you just work on getting those four notes, those upbeats, down to where they're just instinctive and ingrained, right? One, two, three, four. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Got it? All right. So then I combine those two things. I've got the four notes on the downbeats and I've got the four notes on the upbeats. And when I combine them, here's what I get. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's the rhythm of the bass line that I created. Now all we gotta do is fill in the notes. That's the easy part, because all I did for the first four notes was I played, I'm on a G, let's say a G minor scale, right? So that's G, A, B flat, C, D, E flat, F, and G. One octave of the G minor scale, that's all I'm using. So what I did was I played the root, the fifth, the seventh, the minor seventh, and then went back to the octave. Those are my first four notes. So then when I start the groove, that's the first half of my bass line. So that's happening on the downbeats. And then on the upbeats, I played C to F to D to B flat. In other words, the fourth, the seventh, back to the fifth, and then the minor third. I basically outlined a G minor pentatonic scale. And then those four notes happen on the upbeats, right? After, uh, well, at the second half of the bar, like this. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And then when I combine them, I get, So that was the first half of the line. And then for the second idea, it's so simple and so great. I just played a G minor scale descending, right? Using the same rhythmic structure. So then I have one, two, three, four. 
just a G minor scale descending. So that's just one example of a bass line that you can use when you combine these ideas of taking the downbeats in the first half of the bar and then the upbeats in the second half of the bar. I can even reverse that and play the upbeats in the first half of the bar and the downbeats in the second half of the bar. That gives me a, a different bass line and I can even use the same notes. Watch this. So you see how that happened? See how I put that together? I just reversed the idea and put all of the upbeats in the first half of the bar and all the downbeats in the second half of the bar. So the first half of the bar, I had one E and a uh, to E and a. Uh. And then the second half of the bar, I had, <laughs> I had three E and a, uh, four E and a. Uh. Four notes on either side, upbeats in the first half, downbeats on the second half. And you can reverse that play the downbeats in the first half and the upbeats in the second half, as I did in the intro. And then you can also combine these different ideas. Maybe just play three notes on the downbeats and leave the last one open or leave any of them open. This is such a great way to get you started on composing your own bass lines. Using this combination of downbeats and upbeats in any way that you see fit. And you don't even have to play four notes on either side. You can combine different ideas of three notes, two notes, whatever you want. What I also did was I played, uh, I played the line in different ways, using different note lengths, where the first time I played the notes kind of short. And then the second time I went through, I played everything long and make sure all the notes were connected. This is great when the drummer goes to the ride cymbal and the groove just kind of opens up. That's when I'll start to play a little more what's called legato. All right, maybe I'll leave it there and I'll let you experiment. You can come up with your own lines. Maybe let me know in the comments how successful you have been with this exercise. I'm gonna leave it there, folks. Um, do me a favor, if you like this video, please do click like, share it with all your friends, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and click that notification bell to let you know when the next video is coming to you. Um, you can also donate to the channel in a number of ways. I will leave a link in the description box downstairs where you can um, uh, donate whatever amount you see fit. There's also a little join button that will allow you to pay five bucks a month to join the channel. That's five bucks Canadian. Huh? There's also a little heart that says thanks underneath this video that lets you just donate a couple of bucks or whatever you feel. Uh, all of the above helps me out in a huge way and it is greatly appreciated. I thank you for joining the channel. The channel is still growing at an amazing rate. I think there's something like 6,000 people joined the channel over the last month, which is incredible to me. So let's keep that happening um, and see how large we can make this channel. Um, because I'm here to help y'all and I'm here to help as many people as I possibly can. So the more the merrier and I hope you enjoy the videos. And uh, I thank you for joining me once again in the Brownstone. My name is Rich Brown and I will see you in the next one. Peace.